Have you heard of Wordle? It's this new game that's kind of really popular around the world right now. Wow, that pun was not intended at all. It's a word game. You kind of put it before. You guess games. Uh, not guess games. You guess letters. They give you suggestions. You try to figure out um, uh, suave. Kind of gives you hints and all they can do. And then if you get the right letter, yay, success to you. That's the big thing. It's a lot of fun. The biggest fun part about it is that you can share it, which is kind of where it kind of really took off because on Twitter you can easily share your results. I myself am also a culprit of sharing my world scores. It's nice and easy, nice and fun. And after a while of just playing it daily, I realized that this wasn't that hard of a game to recreate. So I did. I've made my own Wordle clone called Reactal because I like to be challenged when I say things. Uh, it's exactly the same game. Uh, you can guess this letter, gives you hints. Uh, I don't know what this letter is. So I'm not gonna try to guess it, um, but it works following all the same rules as the actual game as close as possible. And I figured it'd be kind of fun to show you how I built it from the ground up. When I was actually making it, I took the steps that I took, kind of a train of thought, so to speak, and I'll mostly use this as my script to code along with you. I've realized in making these videos that it's always best when I actually know the end destination because figuring it out live inevitably ends in frustration and disarray. So let's get started. Let's start coding. Uh, I always like to have a split screen when I'm coding. I have here my Reactal YouTube um, folder ready to go. And first things first with any application that I write is just some housekeeping. So let's initialize a new repository. Let's touch a uh, readme file and we shall just add some basic information on here. So Reactal YouTube. Let's code Reactal live on YouTube. And I will put a uh, live in quotation marks because this is not live actually. Um, let's add in the readme file and let's commit it in it. Cool. That is it. First step done. We are off to a wonderful start. Now there's many frameworks and tools that you could use for this. Next.js is my go-to nowadays for most things, but I thought that was kind of overkill for our needs, honestly, because we're just making a single page app that doesn't really need all the boilerplate and fanciness of Next.js. So I actually reached for this other thing called Byte.js, which is, what's the best way to explain it? It makes it easy to make a web application really easy, just from the ground up. Uh, there's no conventions, it's just kind of Webpack, but it's not using Webpack. It just, it, it makes it easy to just start going. Uh, in our example, we're gonna use the React TS preset to, let, I don't wanna see this, uh, to actually get this thing scaffolded correctly. So we have, what we got? Do, 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 yarn create. Now this is what I did last time on my own. I'm gonna do the same thing here, which is silly. Uh, we're actually gonna use the React TS preset. And I always make this mistake because this is in a subfolder. So I'm actually just gonna move this down uh, because I know how to move things good like this. Cool, I don't care. Let's install everything, see how long this takes. Hopefully not too long because these dependencies should be um, fairly warm because I've used it in my side project. Cool, done. Uh, let's dev and see it pop up. Here we go. We got our single page app all ready to go, which is gonna be the basis for our end result. This is what I love about Vite. Vite, Vite, I always say it wrong. Vite, very fast. That was it. Like everything's good to go. I have a nice little conventions that I can follow with app and all these things. And that's kind of all I wanna do for this next step is just get my scaffolding in place. So let's add Vite with React TS template. Add all those things in there. We are rocking. 
I'm moving fast. I'm sure I'll move slower before I know it. Now again, uh, I'm using a fun little stack, which is React, Tailwind, and Tess, which is not something that you see that often in these YouTube videos. Uh, I'm gonna be using um, Tailwind, so let's actually add Tailwind here. Let's do get started. And we got Tailwind with Vites. Let's just actually Google that. Tailwind Vites. It's actually killing me saying this. Now, it says install Tailwind CSS with Vue 3 and Vites. That's because Vites is written by the creator of Vue. So it's easy to assume that most Vite usage would be with Vue by default. But because Vite got so popular and is so generic, it could be used anywhere, but that's why most tutorials you'll see is with Vue 3, but you can kind of ignore that and do what you need for yourself otherwise. So let's install these dependencies. Copy this one over here. Your own add. Dash D is for a dev dependency, so it's not installed as a regular dependency. Uh, we should see those pop up down here pretty darn soon. There it is. Let's initialize this. Sure, doesn't really matter, I use MPX. And now it's created some new files for me to play with. Let's refresh that. Oh, I think I actually have to uh, reload the window because it didn't realize that it was a Git repo initially and it's a little bit confused, but that's fine. Here we go. Correct highlighting. I don't know how you can code without these things because I certainly can't. Uh, let's keep following this tutorial because this is just tutorial driven development as are all good things. And let's copy over this content field as it tells me to. However, let's use our brain for a little bit and not have these extensions be included because I don't actually need Vue or JS or JSX because everything that we're going to code today is just going to be TypeScript or TSX. So that's all we really need to worry about. And then we need a index CSS file to include the Tailwind directives, which I can just use here index CSS. Let's just add them to the top. And then this should be imported, which I believe it already is right in here. And let's start our dev server. We are in dev. And we'll go back here. And if we actually go into our app TX, we actually don't need all this stuff. So just to kind of prove to ourselves that this is working. We're just gonna have, ooh, I got get a co GoPilot install, which is always fun. I'm gonna do a header. So Reactal, save that, shows it there. And we'll do class name equals uh, large, I always forget the names, text large. There we go. And we'll do this, do class name equals um, uh, MX auto to make it centered and we'll do width is 96 for now. There we go. And this should be text align center. I've actually been using, uh, this is definitely not good enough. Text, let's do 6XL. There we go. It's way too big. 4XL. Cool. All right. We have a post we have Tailwind now installed, uh, Tailwind. Just getting all the uh, building blocks together, you know, all the building blocks. Let's add that in there. Cool, we are looking good. Okay, so we have parts two or three done in terms of our coding stack. And the last one is tests. Now, my go-to usually with writing tests is to use Jess, which is the kind of the de facto UI JavaScript testing framework. But I did some Googling uh, ahead of time, not live. And it turns out that adding Jest to Vite is quite the feat <laughs> and not easy. So that was not a fun thing to realize. It made me kind of question my choice to use Vite. But then um, testing for Vite, uh, what I learned is that there's this new tool called the test or Vtest. Essentially, it's trying to be what Vt is to development, Vtest wants to be for testing, to be kind of batteries included, easy to get off and running, as dropped as simple as possible. That's great. 
It's lovely. The one asterisk is that it is still uh, in, in development, which I learned later on in the project, which we'll get to. But by and large, it did what I needed to do. So let's get started with the test. Uh, what do I need to do here? Let's just add it in. Right here. And it's going. Oh my gosh, there's so much boilerplate here to add it in. Not as easy. So we have to add, how did I add this in? We have test and coverage, which we'll add here into the scripts file. This button up here. And we need to add testing. All oh, right, so there's all these things here, which I didn't understand any of this. And I am a big creature of loving to use examples. And in our case, I'm gonna use React Testing Library eventually, so I figured I would just steal this example file. So I have Vite config, which, here we go, test stuff. <laughs> Let's open it up. So we have Vite config right here. We have plugins, let's grab this to have the test works. I think if I were to just run this, does it even work yet? No test file is found. Well, let me just add a test file and see. I, I actually didn't even try this myself. So uh, let's, oh my God, there's so much boilerplate. Uh, hold on, let me, just, let me just add these things in here and I'll show you what I did. Hello, I am back. Thank you for waiting while I did all that. Uh, so there's a lot of boilerplate that I needed to do to add the, the test as I needed to. So obviously the test has a ways to go to be as easy to install as Vite, but that's fine. We can roll with the punches, but let's kind of walk through what I did. Um, I used this example React Testing Library, because I always find that examples are the easiest things to follow and also the best thing to copy from. Again, copy-driven development. Uh, Vite config is used by the test. I added some, so we look in here. This is um, my VS Code, which has nice highlighting for all my Git changes, which is why it's nice to use Git. It helps me kind of show you what I did, which I am a big fan of showing and telling. No, of showing, but not just telling. I like to show and tell and show. Okay, never mind. First things first is um, getting the Vite config working with the test. Now, here by default, it's having setup files, which is kind of like just conventions to set things up in this directory path. I disagree with it. I changed it to test test setup. Uh, this adds the simple testing library just DOM to add your dependable DOM environment in Node. Um, and here's just copy and pasting, copy and paste this stuff. It was nice and easy and fun to do. Um, from there, I actually had to go into the source and grab all the test files, like this setup, which I just showed you, then also this test utils file, which is just boilerplate wrapper. And then always what I enjoy to do is the dependencies, which they don't have spelled out here, but uh, if you've seen a previous video of mine, you know that I love my uh, VS Code Kung Fu, where I can actually go uh, like this, grab this as well, and this as well. I, I love this trick that I do. Select all, de-indent it, I have a uh, extension in VS Code that lets me do um, Alt-Shift-L to make multi-select cursors like this, nice and easy. Uh, actually, in this case, I want to select these things. So I select this as like my template. If you hit uh, Command-D, it'll expand that selection to multiple cursors where I can delete that. Go to the end here. My cursor is just where I want it. I can do at latest for what I'm going to do. Delete, and then I can do um, uh, delete as well with a space, then yarn add D. And now I have this lovely string that I could use to then install all my dependencies. I love saving those small little seconds of time rather than copying and pasting anything. That's what I use to uh, add in all my new package JSONs. And then last but not least, I used the uh, app test file as my sample one for my first test right here. Simple working test for the app app. Don't, for the app app, what am I saying? If I run yarn test, it starts up and 
it's passing. Now it's always a thing to be, you know, worried about because I want to make sure that it's actually testing things. So if I go to app test, you can see, you can see my test is looking for the text reactal. If I were to go here and change this to a uh, secret and save it, I'll rerun and it'll fail because it expected, this is what's hard to, uh, it expected, unable to find an element with a text reactal. This is the pains of uh, recording at 720p, so you can actually see my text, but it's working. And then if you remember, I said that um, the test has some rough edges right now. Uh, this is one of them right here. Uh, for reasons that I can't figure out, and I think it's an open issue somewhere, um, when I'm using the Jess Dom extensions, uh, so Jess Dom, I think is what it is. Yes. So these are custom Jest matchers that make it easier to write Jest tests that make assertions about the Dom. One of them is to be in the document. For whatever reason, all this TypeScript information is not working correctly with the test. So this is just yelling at me. And I spent far too long trying to debug this until I realized that I could just do this and all my pain went away. So definitely some rough edges there, but otherwise it works fine. And what's even blew me away is uh, this I copied and pasted from the example. I had no idea what this was. Like in package JSON, they have this thing for this test UI, the test dash dash UI with this other uh, plugin here. And this literally was the coolest thing ever. You run it, and you get this entire UI to run your tests, which is like, I haven't explored it that much, but like super, super cool. Uh, I also, if you change this, it'll change it in the actual source file code. Like uh, really, really, really cool stuff that they have in here. That's what you kind of get for kind of deciding everything for yourself. But again, I need that right now. Let's close some tabs. So I'm getting kind of, Lost in the madness. This is my example. Cool. Don't need neat. Cool. Uh, great. So we have all these things to add uh, the test, right? So let's add the test. And that's it. We have the core. We've done all the tooling. <laughs> we haven't really made an application yet. That was all the preamble just so we could actually start to code. So uh, if you made it this far, congratulations. Uh, if you're anxious to start actually seeing some code, now is the time. So let's start now. Okay, so first things first. I wanna work on this fun core algorithm that kind of shows you how these things, um, how this works. Like I wanna, I wanna, I, I like to start with data. So let's start with here. Um, I actually looked around to get some, you know, a dictionary that I could actually use for this, like a, a word bank dictionary. And I actually found this fun website, which I'm copy and pasting, which has all these words in it. And I figured I'd use some, now copy and pasting all these words. Does this work even? Did I make myself, oh man, I made myself have a lot harder time than I needed to. But what I did when I was actually developing this, let's go away was um, some fun little uh, console things. So if you do document dot query selector all, uh, I can see, so when I looked in here, each one of these words is inside of here, this T comp. So where's my console? Console, so it's query selector all. It's inside of, uh, so you can see my previous shenanigans, but I have tcont all, uh, L-I-A, so I'm selecting all those and I'm mapping all those to get the inner text. So map is not a function, right? Uh, because query selector all, fun little quivia, quivia, trivia, <laughs> is that query selector all actually doesn't return an array. It returns a uh, object called a node list, which is array-like, which means that it looks like an array, acts like an array, but is not an array, which means that you don't actually get all these nice little methods on it. But luckily for us, people know that this is a problem. So we have this from fun little array from function to my, to convert the node list into an actual array. So we can actually get all these words here. 
Now, uh, because this is not going to be a thing that I can copy and paste, uh, fun fact, there is actually a built-in method in Chrome called copy, which will actually copy those contents into my clipboard. Let's go here. I'm going to call this uh, wordbank.json because it is a word bank. And we are going to make this array and paste it. And here we have our fun little word bank. Nice and easy. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do now that we have a word bank is actually making some word utils to actually start making operations on these files. Why is he not over here? Let's do file word utils. And the first thing we need to do is actually just get a random word from this list that we can actually use when we actually start guessing a word. So let's do a import um, we want to do import word bank from word bank and we shall create a method called uh, function get random word. See now this is where uh, <laughs> uh, uh, what's his name uh, github Copilot gets just crazy where, you know, I would have actually Googled this, how to actually do random, because this is a thing that's easily just to Google. But luckily for us, we just get Copilot acting as our um, Googler for us. So this is indeed, you know, it's getting a random number between zero and one, including, including decimals, multiplying it by how the length and getting the floor of it. So we have a random index and we get the random word. Sweet. So for sake of, you know, diligence, let's actually add a test file to get things going. So we have word utils.test.ts. And we're going to copy and paste this scaffolding because I, again, am a big proponent of uh, word utils from word utils. Uh, oh, we actually have to export this because that's how we can get it. We're going to make a top level word utils. And we'll do a random word. And we shall do expect get random word. Look at that. Nice and import. And VS Code is such a delight all the time. We'll expect VS get random road. Uh, I mean, truthy is true. We can do. Uh, to equal sugar. Now this should fail because it's a random word by very definition, but I figure we can just get things from here. Right, so not the, uh, whoa, 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 expected one, got an array. Wait, we have a bug here. This random index, word utils, get random word, this should only give us one word. Word bank. Word bank. Oh, we have a nested array here. Nobody caught that. Why didn't you catch that? We caught it here. Okay, let's go down. Okay, cool. Expected sugar got quick. One and one. This is where you write test. Because otherwise we save our times here. We'll say uh, to be truthy. That should be true always. Um, expect this length to equal five. It should always be five. Cool. Okay. So we got some basic tests working, but we got uh, add word bank and some basic tests. Now here is where I have a bit of an identity crisis because this is fun. And the next step I think is to kind of calculate, you know, how to given a guess, compute if the guess is correct, but I got kind of uh, confused when I was doing this because I was, I'm a UI engineer by and large, and I needed some UI to really back on this. So I actually decided to doing UI instead. So let's do that. Let's go into here, yarn dev, and let's start getting some basic things together. Um, Let's do, we got app test. Okay, we don't need, there's some more cleanup to do. Let's go away. 
We got app CSS we don't need because we're gonna use Tailwind. Don't need logo, delete that. Uh, logo goodbye, uh, import SAS we don't need. Don't need this counter. I prefer this style just for my own aesthetic taste. Everything's still working. Don't need fav icon. You can delete that from uh, index right here. Cool. Uh, index, yes. We also don't need all this, um, but I'll leave it for now because it's nice. All right. So what I want to do is start making these word rows, for lack of a better thing. Make a new file called uh, wordrow.tsx. We'll have this be a new component. Don't need this import state. Save that, go away. Fix this here. Uh, we'll do word row. And this is going to be word row over here. Do, 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 do. Uh, we're going to have this be in, let's make this over here. This will be part of the header and then we'll actually have the main and we'll have this be word row. This has to be imported just like that. Word row. All right. Let's actually add some spacing class name equals, um, do border bottom Right, this is border, yep, border width, um, border black, and gray. Come on, border black, nah, border G, border gray 500, and we want this border bottom actually. So if I save that, I just want the border to be bottom, just like that. Let's add some padding on the bottom. So padding uh, bottom mm, four, too much, two. And we'll also add some margin bottom two, like that, cool. All right, nice little spacing. Actually, we want to do margin on top and bottom. So do margin Y, so the top and bottom two. There you go, some nice spacing. Okay, so word row, we, need to render the row of words. Um, I imagine that the state for this will be up here and we'll kind of store this as letters. So for now, we're gonna store this as, um, we'll do hello. And we actually have to add this as a prop type. So letters, it's gonna be an empty string by default. And then we're gonna have this be a, um, word row props just like that and this will be letters is a string so now this should be happy cool now for each letter we want to render a square so we're going to call this so let's make it easy for now actually let's not assume too much let's say that this is only part of the word so we have h-e-l um, and we want to actually make sure we always render five letters no matter what. So we actually have to calculate how many letters we have left. Um, we're going to have there be uh, letter length equals five. And we want to see how many letters are left. So letters remaining equals, uh, look at that. <laughs> Copilot is so funny. Okay, so letters remaining. And then we want to actually say, uh, actually we're going to do this. We're going to do um, letters prop. You can see why in a second. Like that. I'm going to say letters equals, uh, yeah, so we want to split the letters so it's in an array, right? And then we want to concatenate array. Now, this is what's really Whoa. Letters remaining, fill. So again, get the copilot doing the work for us. So it's saying, so here we're taking these two letters. So for in our case, we have H-E-L. This is gonna be a uh, three element array. And then we're gonna make a new array here. Um, 
I actually learned this while I was making this video. If you use the uh, use array as a function with the value, it'll make an empty array, but we actually have to fill them with empty characters because it'll be, I think, undefined by default, and React won't under that. But now what that means, we actually can go here and do letters map, and we'll do character. And we shall say span, let's just take that and that. I have no idea what, look at that, cool. And line block MX1. This is all looking good. Now, uh, I imagine the uh, individual characters is just gonna have more complexity. So actually I'm just gonna break it out proactively into a character box. Um, we're just gonna say, oh my gosh, look at that, that's crazy. Uh, and then this is going to be, let's see how much character, character box. Yo. Okay. Well, I guess I don't have to teach you anything because, oh, okay. It's not that smart. Uh, we're just going to actually call this value. Just to make it a little bit abstract. Um, like this interface, character box props, letter. No, it's not right. That's fine. I'll change you. Value this, move this into here. Okay, thank you, I know. Unexpected character somewhere. Return this value. Do, 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 do. Puppy power. Okay, cool. All right, so we got this working. Um, let's add some more style here. We want to do border all the way around. We'll do border gray. We're in the 500s now, right? Cool. I'll do padding everywhere of four. Cool. <clears throat> now, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is where, oh, we also want to make this uppercase, right? We don't want it to be in this gross little lowercase. Cool. And we'll do font bold. Look at that. And we'll do um, text. Do a little bit large. Nah. Let's just remove that and let's reduce the time a little bit. Let's do three, two, and then we'll go back to four. Okay. This is looking fine right now in my block MX1. Sure. Okay. Um, I don't know why these are not here, but this is rendering correctly for now. Um, now, this is where I had a huge detour when I was first making this, where I actually had to learn um, grid, which I've never done before. Uh, and I did a lot of reading about what's the difference between flex and grid. Um, the best explanation that I found, and I'm not an expert in grid, so I'll not pretend to be, but for the purposes of this video, is that grid is when you want to align things in, a, in two dimensions, the you know X and Y axes, and uh, Flexbox is when it's just one direction, either horizontal or vertical, not both dimensions. So this is going to be a grid of everything. So I'm going to use grid for now. Um, and I'm going to have a shoot We're going to have the each character, where are we here? So each row will be its own grid layout. So we're going to do here grid and we're going to do a grid column of five. Look at that, it's already spacing out correctly. I'll do a gap of four. So actually, we'll remove this uh, margin here to let it, the grid handle it. And then here we actually need to do a uh, text center. Okay, not looking too bad from the real thing. Uh, I feel like I need to, that's all we had to do, text center, a place, put a gray. Border two. I can also do make a little bit of a thicker border, a little bit more gravitas. Cool. And I feel like the font needs to be bigger. Text large. Text two. XL. Okay, I'm good with that. Cool. So now, hello. Look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so that's, I think, enough for this initial just layout of things working by and large. So let's actually just add this in. So let's create word row.
which I think was pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Okay, let's get tricky. I think it's time that we delve into the algorithm. Uh, we've got some basic UI to understand that each of these uh, squares can have different states. And uh, Wordle has three separate states on a guess. There could be a miss, which is when the letter does not exist in the word at all. There is a present, where the letter is present, but it's in the wrong location. And there is a match, where it's the right letter in the right location. A fun little thing that it does is that there could be uh, two letters in the word, and there's little fun complications in correctly creating that algorithm when that's the case. But to start things off, let's go into our fun little word tales. And this is why it's nice that we have testing to actually do test-driven development. We'll actually do some TDD, which is uh, terrific a kick, maybe. Um, so let's start here. We're gonna have, uh, we'll make a enum, we're gonna call it letter state, and there's gonna be three states. There'll be a miss, that gray. There'll be a present, which is the yellow, and there will be a match, three states. And then we shall make a function called compute guess, which will take two arguments. We'll have the guess as the string, and the actual uh, answer, I guess. Uh, what is it called? Oh, what is this? All right, I don't wanna cheat that much. Go away. Uh, word string string. But God, get away. The thing is, even if you take this, you're certainly gonna have to evaluate this. And I think actually, um, well, we could, we could start with it. Let's just see how it goes, all right? So this is gonna return a Boolean just to make things uh, oh no, actually it's not gonna return a boolean. It's gonna return a result of letter state. So like that, just like that. So it'll be an array where each item in the array will be one of these letter states. So first things first, we're gonna make this into a array. So we have the guess array, we have the word array. So this is the word string array and we have the result. Actually, just because I like my own style, we have the result, which is what we're going to store things in. We have the guess array, so the actual letters in the guess and the actual answers of the word. Um, I'm actually going to use, for each guess, um, we're going to do, uh, right, for each, because I don't really like this. So if the, if the word array includes, so let's just delete this. This is where copilot is both a gift and a curse. So if the word array includes letter, this is a naive thing. So if, if the word, the answer, let's just call it the answer, answer string, answer array. So we'll say, no, okay. If the, no, no. If, the uh, right if the letter equals the answer array index, that's a match, correct? Else, if the answer array includes the letter, so if it's just present, okay. Else, it's a miss. Like this. Okay, so uh, basically, I don't have to teach anything. Use GitHub Copilot, and that is the most naive thing to do. Now. Let's see if uh, we can get some tests going here as well, because that'll be nice to have. We have here, uh, we'll just do get random words like that. Now let's go down here, make a new compute guess. So first one is it, it matches with, so it works with match and presence. So if we have expect compute guess, we'll say boost is our guess and the answer will be basic. And this will equal, oh, go away. So the first letter, B and B, is a match, correct? I gotta import this too. The second letter, O and O, 
Does O exist here? No, so it should be litter state be a miss. O again should be a miss. See, doesn't know everything. S, that is the fourth letter, but it's the third one here, so that means it's present. Letter state is present. And then T, it should be a miss. So letter state, miss. Let's save that. And gotta close that up. Cool. Yarn test. Cool, so that is passing. And again, it's always a good idea to make it fail, to make sure that you didn't do something weird. Uh, cool, okay. This this sucks for the enums because it's just, you know, index arrays, what I could do to help me debug if I wanted to, which, you know, we'll do for now, is we'll actually grab this, make this into a string enum. So now when I run this, I can see that, this is still hard to read, but it's just doing a weird diff. I think it's up here, right? Expected match miss miss to duplicate equal miss miss miss. So I don't know if it's easier to read this and scroll up to zero 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 one. Yeah, I have no idea. We'll just leave this for now. But this is working as expected. Um, let's have a case where all the things match. So um, let's scroll this down here. This is TDD for you, live and in color. It works with all matches, so that's boost. Did this cool? Let's do a full miss as well. Works with full miss. I can't type full miss, so we'll do uh, guard. So they should all be miss. Cool. And last but not least, we're going to do the case where uh, it only does one match when two letters are present, which I don't actually know what that means, but um, eh. only does one match when two letters are present. So we have here our guess of solid and our answer of boost. So S is present. O is a match. L doesn't exist, so that's a miss. And then I, so this is what I'm trying to guess for, is that O exists in my guess, but it exists twice here. It should only do miss for the rest of them. And that should work as expected. Okay. So this is our naive implementation of uh, compute guess. Uh, create naive implementation of compute guess. And you shall see why in a second. Um, I was feeling pretty good at myself about this until I realized that uh, there's a lot of cases that I did not account for at all. So for example, uh, when there are two letters present, so for example, uh, where's the test case? So we have here, um, uh, let, me, let me just copy and paste this, these test cases in. We'll do the first one first. We're gonna do, uh, when two letters are present, but the answer has only one of those letters. So in this case, the answer is smelt. The guess is a lol. So A is an obvious miss. L is present because it exists here. However, this L is, is another L, but we already said that it was present. So this should not say that it's present again. This should be a miss. There's only one L in the answer, but there's three L's in the guess, and there should only be one present. So if we save this, we can see we fail. Uh, what our algorithm is doing so we expect, this is, this is what we expect, this is the answer. So 0, 1, 1, uh, sorry, the answer is 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. However, we're saying 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And that's because our naive implementation is just saying, does our answer array include that letter? And that's it. We're not taking into account any state at all. So what do we do? 
we got to add a lot of complexity here. And my algorithm for this was pretty dang hard. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get to the answer and then I'm going to explain to you what the heck I did. Okay, let's attempt explanation. So I have here the answer and we're going to walk through it together. First thing we're going to do is just a nice little sanity check here where if the guess length is not equal to, and also this is a nice way to follow along and what's changed here. You can see the git diff. So some things are different, some things are new, some things are modified. Um, this is a nice little sanity check. We're just going to say that if the guess is not the same length as the answer string, then just return the result, which is just an empty array. And I have a nice little easy test case here that returns and asserts that to be true. And all my tests are passing right now, which is nice and fun to be the case. So we have here the answer string, we have here the guess as array, and we have that answer letter count as well. First things we do when we actually go into that first array, when we go through each letter in the guess, is we're gonna get the answer letter. So we're actually gonna look here. So this is, we're looking, we're keeping track of the answer letter because that's the source of truth. So we're gonna say for this current answer letter, if it exists, so let's say for the case, the, the initial state where it doesn't exist, we're gonna say that this answer letter, so um, as a concrete example, um, smelt. Let me actually do this here. So I thought this is easier to actually see this right here. So the answer letter in this case is S. A does not exist, but we wanna keep track that S is being used. Actually, let me do this instead, because this is gonna be an easier one. Uh, here, there we go, colon. So C is not in this array, so we're gonna make it one, fine. O, same thing. We're gonna say that it doesn't exist in our dictionary, so we'll make it one. Next time we get to O though, we're gonna see that it actually exists in our dictionary and we're gonna increment the count to two. So now we'll say that there's now two instances of zero. So the actual, so this object is looking like this. It's gonna have C102, right? What the heck? <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, cool. And then we just kind of go through our regular loop. Um, and we did a change here. We have this from answer array to answer includes letter. So, you know, not that much different. Answer, answer array, same, same, same. Same, I think if we actually move this back to answer array, all my tests should still pass. Answer, string, answer. Oh, I just renamed the variable, that's what it was. Okay, cool. So, first pass, we get that naive state. Like we're just gonna do, you know, match, present, miss. This is the same algorithm that we had initially, but now we have this letter count. After that, we're gonna go through that result array. So we have this array of all these letter states, and we're gonna go through that. We're only worried about, um, so we're saying for the current result, if it's not present, then return. Because present is where we're gonna have to kind of shift where it is. Because a miss is a clear miss, right? That's pretty easy. A match is a clear match. That's pretty easy too. But for present, we kind of have to either upgrade or downgrade its state. We have to uh, downgrade its state if we had those. So for example, here, um, this L, L, O, L, there's only one L. All these are gonna be present in our current, our old algorithm, but all these remaining Ls should be misses because there's only one L in the actual answer. Likewise, if there is um, a present, oh, likewise, there may be two matches, which we actually have to also downgrade as well, but I'll get to that later. So if it's not present, we don't care about it for the current result. And then we're gonna take the guess as array. So the guess, so our guess, again, up here, let's copy and paste this down here. So the guess as array letter will be, so for our first result, C, the guess is gonna be A, so we're doing a reverse index, the guess letter. And we're gonna say for this answer, so then we're actually doing a nested loop. So we're gonna loop over the actual answer of colon. So for if the current answer letter C doesn't equal our guess letter O, then return. But for the cases where it does match and the result in that same index, so for example, um, this L is present from our previous array. Um, 
it's not a match. We're going to skip that. We're actually going to say if it's less, if our if our letter count is less than zero, it means we've used up all of our letters. Like L went down to uh, zero, then it's a miss. However, in this case, which I think the other example here is, um, where is it? Where is it? Oh, whoa. If the result answer is a match, what is this for? What does this do? Let's see. I don't actually remember what this does. Let me just comment this out. And this is saying for when one letter matches, but guess has more of the same letter. So, right. So this is saying that it's present. Gotcha. So this is a downgrade when we use up all the letters, but this is also a downgrade when we're saying that uh, for the guess, so for example here, so this case, this first one, L, this is saying that's present, right? Our first guess would say this is present because it exists in the answer. However, we have the right answer too right here, L. So this is actually a miss because we actually, it's not being captured by the count, it's almost like the precursor to it, but we have to also then say, if that results in that index, like when we get to this L, we're going to see that the previous answer, you know, we're just passing over there way many times. You're going to have to kind of step through it yourself, but it gets to that state. So we save that, and then this is where we actually decrement the count when we've used up that letter. Um, but again, just kind of thinking through and playing with Wordle, this is kind of the end state of what we want to be. And, and I, I kind of forgive, I apologize for not being as thorough, but I barely understand it myself which is what it comes down to. But suffice it to say, this is the full algorithm, so you actually get the correct answers as expected. But again, there's no UI to show for this. This is just code, but it should be what we desire. But let's add this in. So add all edge cases of our core algorithm, uh, just like that. Cool. Okay, so we have the algorithm working as we need. Uh, we actually have some comments in here to clean up because we've now conquered the algorithm forever and ever and don't ever need more debugging information in there. Uh, remove debugging. So next thing that I want to do with you is actually get this to start rendering as we want. We have to have these render according to the colors here. And we can leverage having the ability to compute the guess correctly. We'll use hello as our example word for now. We need to, so where are we have? We have app, we have these three states, and we have, well, we need to have actually have different words, right? So we'll do hello. So we'll do um, hello, solar, penny. Uh, we want, there's going to be, how many rows are there? There's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six rows eventually. So we need to double this. So let's keep going. Penny, so many times. Penny, if we were thoughts, snack, stare. I'll do one that's incomplete. So we have these letters here. Let's start up the old dev server again. And inside, so this is all working correctly. Um, let's actually lay this out correctly. Uh, for this, we're going to be using uh, grid again to make sure that it's laying out both along the two axes as we desire. Uh, it's going to be a grid as we tell Tailwind. We're going to say that the rows should be to should be six, right? six rows. And then the gaps, we're going to say be four. Yes, okay, so that's a nice little grid there. I actually hate these grids because I always see that phantom uh, square between all the grids, which always makes me really confused, but that's fine for now. Let's close this. Okay, so we have this word letters, letters remaining, letters, and then what we can actually do here is get the state of the guess. So um, we need to have a word so actually let's open up word details so on load of the application we're just going to compute a where is it we're just going to get a random word um 
So for this answer string, for the sake of things here, we're going to say that word equals get random word. So this will be cached and then by default answer string will be this word. So if you don't get that second argument, we'll actually use this save value. Uh, so actually if I were to log this out right like that, we should see a, oh, thanks. I'm doing things maddening two children with the same key. Oh, is this inside of word row? Let's clean up this little error. Uh, the key is the character, but it could definitely be the same. So uh, let's do uh, index, just use index for now. And let's remove that warning because they should always be in the same order. Um, word utils isn't being imported, I guess. It's just why this isn't being hit. So in our case, we actually want to have um, the guest states be computed. So given this word, let's do guest states. And we call, call this compute guess. And we shall put in here the letters prop. I'm going to do all that right there. Uh, go away. Okay, so now if I save this, now we have the letter being created. So every time we reload the page, we'll get a new word. That's fine for now. But we'll be comparing these letters against what the word will be. So we now need to pass this state down into the character box so that given each state, so this is gonna be an array of the letter states, we're gonna style the characters differently. So we have here, um, we'll pass it in here. So we'll say state equals uh, guess states and we're gonna pass in the index. So Given the index in the letter, so in our case, the third index, we want to get the third state for that letter to know how to render this as we desire. Okay, so state is going to be letter state. Again, the auto import is always so much fun. And then state right here. So if I log this, stateses, stateses, uh, it's going to be a lot of noise actually, is what it's going to be. Yeah just the enum as an integer, which doesn't really help us with anything. However, we have to now start thinking about styles. And I think the easiest way to do this is with a nice little enum where we have um, character, char character state styles like that. And we're gonna have here, miss, yes, go. Uh, what is it called again? Copilot, go pilot. So we have miss present match. So for a miss, we want it to be gray. So background gray 500. For present, we want to be yellow. And for match, we want to be green. So we actually have to add some more styles here. Uh, this is getting a little bit hard to read. So I think I can just do that for sake of legibility. And then what we're going to do is get the state styles. So uh, I guess this means that the state can also, so let's do, um, the state can actually be null for the case where we have, in, so there's no guesses here, like there's nothing there, so this can actually be null in some cases. So in that case, we're gonna say, if state is null, then we'll do nothing for now. But if it's nothing, then we want to do character state styles and we're going to do an index on the state. Like that. Then we can take these state styles and then append them. So let's do this. This has to be. Oh boy, like that, like that, oops, oops, what did I do? And then we'll add this here, state styles and save that. Look at that, ooh. So given the word, this will change the guesses because the word may have different letters, but this is already showing things correctly. We have some other things to clean up here, the border, so, 
by default, we want the borders to match up with the colors. So we're gonna do border gray. So we'll do some fun little multi-select again. We'll do, actually let's do this. This is even better. I'm gonna copy that, the color. Then I can do border the color 500. Save that, look at that, it pens it over. Really cool. That is working as expected. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I think that's it, right? That's a nice little easy way to end things. Um, I'm not sure if I need to really add any other, um, uh, actually, let's actually rename this. It still says Vite app, but it needs to actually be Reactal. So we're gonna call this Reactal. But I think that's good. Let's just save this state for now. We're gonna say, um, get word row rendering correct UI according to state. Super, okay. Now what we wanna do is to let the user actually play the game. Cause we kind of have kind of the fundamental behavior working as expected in our controlled environment. Given a guess, given um, the algorithm, things seem to be rendering as we need. The next step is to actually let a user play the game. And I'm taking a small incremental step towards this because I don't really want to jump to the end. That's going to be a little bit too hard. It's also kind of replaying the way that I have built this application just so I can unblock myself and actually see things working. And so the actual final version of the game has this whole keyboard, which I actually didn't want to build initially. That was the thing that I thought was a later concern. Didn't want to worry about it. So there's also the ability to do, you know, to type, like I'm typing right now to add things in. But again, that was a little bit scary for me. So I actually took the easiest way of making this work by just adding a little debug area for myself. So uh, in this case, I'm gonna add a uh, input element that lets me actually just input in words to be guessed in the game. So um, we're gonna have input type equals text and we're gonna have it be uh, value equals um, the guess and then uh, on change set guess. Okay, so now I actually have to use some state. Our first true uh, guess set guess equals uh, use state. Cool, and let's input this in. Cool, okay, so now we have an input element which doesn't render at all because uh, Tailwind never renders anything by default. So let's actually add this so we can actually see what this is. Um, what does this do? Oh, cool, I'll take that. Yeah, that's fine, nice and big. Actually, don't want it to be full. Let's have it be half. There we go, cool. So I can type the words in, and then on enter key, I can have it actually submit the words, which means that I actually have to start having these not actually be uh, static. And this is where I actually want to start doing some state management because I want this to be accessible globally and also I want to play with a new fun library toy. Uh, in my case, I want to use this library called Zustand, which I've been wanting to play around with for a while. I think I made a video about this a long time ago. It's essentially just a bare bones, you know, Redux-like way of doing a store and it kind of brings with a lot of things with it that, you know, I've been curious to see if it would help me when trying to design React applications. Um, let's add it in here. Also what I want to do, another reason why I want to start using a store is that I also want to be able to save state in between refreshes. So you refresh this here, um, the state's saved. Okay, so what I was in before and local storage. So built into Zustan is a persist middleware. So it's going to essentially do that for me for free. So let's actually make, uh, let's actually yarn add Zustan, add it in here. And then we shall touch source store.ts right here. And let's actually copy and paste this as our base template for us to make our store. In our case, we're gonna have a few values on here. So we actually have to, uh, we're using, so actually there's, is there a TypeScript on here? 
Uh, you create context, usage, what does this say? Uh, create context, I don't want to create context, I want just a create. Uh, how to type store, no. Um, how to type emitter. Okay, so I think what I can actually do here is it can actually, it can infer the type structure, but I, let's see actually how we can get so far. So what's cool about Zustan, as far as I understand it, which is very small, because I learned it just for this uh, application, is you can essentially, where's the top here? You essentially set whatever values you want on your store object. You get this API of set and get that you can then manipulate the content inside of it. So you kind of set everything inside of it. And then when you want to use it in a store, you have this simple API, like this create function returns a use store hook that you can then use in your components anywhere, which is super, super easy. So because I want to have things stored in between, one of the things that I want to store in between, this should actually be uh, reactal, and then uh, get stored, sure. I'll, uh, by default, it uses local storage. I want to use local storage. Cool. Now, let's remove this. I want to record, uh, I want to save the actual answer, which is get random word. So I'm going to save the answer in the store. And I want to save my guesses in the store. So I actually can re-render re it in between. Um, in our case, let's get some dummy things. Hello, uh, solar penny. And then because I want people to actually submit a guess with this input, we're going to add a add guess method. So given a guess, which is a string. Uh, look at that. Well, that's nice and easy. Uh, this is not correct though. With Zustand, you actually have to call get to get the store. So in our cases, we're gonna do uh, get for guesses and then state doesn't know what it is. So that's cool. So get the new state of guesses is gonna be this. Um, I think I actually have to type this store as I need it to be. So I'm gonna call this interface store State. Oh my gosh, can't type this one word. We have answer, which is string. We have guesses, which is an array of strings. Then we have add guess, which is this, correct. And now I can actually put this here and have this be store state for generic funds. And that works as expected, which is awesome. Why is this API here? This should not be, is this set? is given the previous, okay, so set is given the previous state, which I can just call uh, state like that. Does that, if I remove this, does that actually still work? No, doesn't have any idea. I have to still include that in there. So given the previous state, or I can do this here. So we're gonna make this a next state here. We're not actually using this for now, so we can just get rid of it. Got random word. And now, if I spin this back up, if I spin this up, and I refresh the page, I go to application, and I go to local storage, I can see in here that I'm storing all this in here. And the answer is raised. I refresh the page, and it's staying the same, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, let's delete this, let's try this again. Uh, oh, we're not using this store anymore. Oh, that was for me. Ooh, that was uh, what I've had in the future, but not today. So that, that was actually a lie. Ignore that, that was a lie. Um, let's actually start using this in the store. Let's actually go into app state, and we're just gonna get all the states. So we're gonna use state from here. Uh, no, I want use store, right, yes. Just like that. We're gonna call the entire store into here, save that. Now, if we reload it, we can see here, okay, here we have state, answer, woman, guesses are here. I press the page and it's not changing at all. Um, for debugging purposes, I want to actually be able to clear local storage. How do I actually reset the local storage? How is that? Is that Local, see the full documentation for this middleware for persist. Uh, where's the thing to copy and paste? I know it's in here. Personalize on rehydrate version. 
do 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 set options clear storage there we go this can be used to fully clear the persistent value so let's grab this put it in here and then for debugging purposes whenever we want to actually um so right now this is woman so i save that and refreshes refresh this not being saved so actually we can then remove this there we go new answers so we want to clear it we have an easy way of doing that so that helps when we're debugging things but let's actually start rendering our application from the state and our guesses so we're actually kind of have to do the same thing we did here where we have uh, how many guesses are there we have um one two three four five six guesses so um guess length is six and we're gonna say um we shall do, ooh, scratching, scratching. Number of guesses remaining. So we have here, uh, we have um, uh, number of guesses remaining. So that's a guess length minus the guess length. So this is actually gonna be um, state, guesses length that's the number of guesses remaining and then we actually want to um, have our rows equals whoa state guesses so we're going to copy the guesses so we can actually just do this here and then what is this saying so copy number of guesses remaining and fill with empty guesses right that sounds about right there so let's actually do this and then also we have to have our current guess too. So this should go here. Oops, oops. We have to have, oh, actually, what we need to do is only add the current guess. We haven't done all the guesses so far. So um, we're gonna do this. I'm gonna put this right here for now. We're gonna say, if number of guesses remaining, that's wrong. That's wrong. If number of guesses remaining is zero, or yeah, actually you're right. Great. If it's not zero, if we have more guesses remaining, then we'll push on our current guess. And then we want to have this be down here. Wait, this. Wait a second here. Number of guesses remaining, number of guesses. Uh, Number of guesses, rows length. So here's our rows. If our rows are greater than zero. Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have, if the rows, we ha if we haven't done all of our rows, then this should be guess length minus rows length, right? So, if we've done all six guesses, then all right, if the rows length equals six, there we go. Doesn't equal six. Is less than uh, guess length. Then we'll push that, and then number of guesses remaining is going to be the guess length minus the rows length. So we have that there. So we'll have rows be a let, and then. Uh, rows will equal rows concat. Yeah, same thing there. Cool. Save that. And now what we can do is do rows map. Beautiful, beautiful. I can remove all of these just like that. So we have keys index letters is, uh, we'll call this actually um the word or the word is the prop word word this is the word word and then this has the letters to the prop and we'll save this cool so this is the same every time the guess is changing every time because it shouldn't be oh right this state is changing 
because we still have in our old way this uh, answer string being used by default, which it shouldn't be anymore. Also, we don't need this anymore. We actually want this to be required. So now this should have some failures somewhere right here because it's like, eh, I don't have the second argument. So in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, uh, answer equals use store. And get the state. I'll do state answer just like this. Pass it as the second argument. There we go. So now every refresh should be the same because the answer is plain. And we have in here, look at that P and cool. Things working as expected and it's being saved. And now what we need to do, whoa, do, do, do. Okay, so it's being entered in as expected, but then something's going wrong from there. So that's gonna be a fun thing to figure out. But we wanna say, okay, here, so on input, on change, we'll do on change. Where do we put this up here? on change just like that I think what we're gonna say this should be uh, what is it gonna be uh, react on change handler for github copilot to work come on there we go change event let's just grab this and use that because I don't want to guess the actual type signature there we'll this e Save that, cool. So in our cases, what we wanna do is we have the, uh, we're gonna say the new guest. So when we get to the final, when we get to all five letters, we wanna add this to our store. So we're gonna have um, new guest equals this. I'm gonna say if the new guest length is equal to five. If I had this saved anywhere, letter length. Let's do this. Let's do word utils. Oops. Letter length export. Save that. Let's just being let's import this in here. Sweet. Save that. I want to do if it equals the letter length. Then we're gonna do state add guess new guess. And then we're gonna actually say, we're gonna set the guest back to empty and return. Otherwise, we're gonna set guests to the new guest like that. Let's save that. So now if I do uh, blarb, look at that, keeps going. And then what was the plane? What was the uh, was plane? Look at that, we win. Okay, well that's a, uh, index error, which is always fun. There's actual error there telling us invalid A array length. So that's a thing to handle later, which is fine. Invalid error array length. Let's save that. Okay, this is why I actually stored this here. Not, per not correct edge case handling yet, which is fine. There we go. Okay, so things are working as expected there. You can actually type in the net letter and put it in, add the guess, it's being saved. What else do we want to do in this state? I think that's kind of enough. That's just the raw behavior where you can type things in, get things working. Um, yeah, using Zeus stand, which is always fun. Mm. Oh, also we have a little bit more cleanup to do. Word utils, we don't need to save this anymore. So we're just putting it actually on the uh, store itself. Cool, let's do that. So let's um, move state handling to zoo stand and allow users to input text. Things are slowly coming together in the most exciting, exciting way. Okay, so I think the obvious thing that we have to do next is actually get this error handling working. When you actually finish the game, win or lose, drain or shine, uh, happy or sad, mad or sleepy or wait, I don't know. Okay, so this is back to a good state. So now we're gonna say that um, we're gonna have an end of game state and we're gonna disable the input so things don't get wonky donkey. So we're gonna say, 
Um, and also, so let's do this. Let's do uh, is game over when rows length equals uh, guess length. And then if the game is over, then we shall say that it is then disabled. Uh, so let's do that first. So we have, oh, disabled is game over. Rows length. Uh, no, this is gonna have to go up here before we actually add things on. Uh, this actually has to go all the way up here. Actually, let's do this. It should just be state guesses because that's how much things is there. Cool. Okay, now it's disabled. Let's add a nice little modal to tell people that the game is over. Is game over? Is game over? Oh my gosh. Okay, and, uh, too much. Too much GitHub Code Pilot. Don't need it. Let's do, uh, we'll make a div role equals modal. Look at this. And we're gonna say, uh, game over. And this is going to be class name equals, so this is gonna be an absolute position, background white. Um, okay. Uh, we're gonna have it be, oh boy, we need to do left. Let's actually make this new line. Ooh. We do left zero, uh, right, this is the trick to center things, right? Uh, oh, this has to be eps relative that it's inside. So right here, I think is what it is. Uh, relative, there we go. Um, uh, we have to do top, it's gonna be, we'll do top, we'll do one fourth from the top. Right here, we need padding of uh, six, uh, we need some margin as well, I think, or just less width. So width to do three fourths like that. We do MX auto, make it centered. Uh, we'll do a rounded border. So let's put those up here, rounded. And then we'll have border gray 500. And cool, we'll do text center. Cool, game over. Border gray, it's a little bit dark, I can't see the border. Ah, that's because there is none. Do border, like that. There you go, cool. And then what we're gonna do is let people actually make a new game if they want to. So we'll have this be, um, Button, uh, class name, we'll get to that in a second, but we'll just have this be uh, new game. And we're gonna say on click equals state new game. Um, uh, actually, we're gonna have to do two things. We're gonna do uh, WAPS, we'll do state new game, and we'll have to reset the guess, set guess, and local state to empty state. Okay, cool. So a new game, uh, we want this to be class name, block, cool. Um, do, we gotta do border again. Border, uh, rounded, uh, border green, 500. 500, 500, uh, background, green, actually, I'm sorry, BG, green, 500 as well. We'll just add some padding, we'll add some margin to the top so it's not on top of each other. And then we'll make this uh, MX Auto as well, cool. There you go. And then also tell us a nice little shadow. Look at that, nice little shadow, nice little button right there. So state new game doesn't exist, that's fine. Let's go to use store, let's add it in. So we're gonna have 
it be new game is going to be void 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 and this is throwing an error because it does not i love how typescript is just like blurg and then it's just like i want a new game property that's all i want that's all i really really want so a new game will whoops what is this let's go away when uh where is it we shall do new game will use set to set the new so answer will be a get random word and we'll reset the guesses to an empty array just like that save so now if all goes well look at that Ugh, ugly um, banana oh man that jumping of UI is such a pain to fix. It took me a long time when I was actually putting this whole thing together, but um, you know, we'll we'll get to it later. But now pants. The fun thing here is I can actually go to the application and cheat. So the word is heart. So I can do hearts. T. Okay, but now. If we win early, we'll do that later. But I think for now, what I want to do is actually, so that's that's working. We have new games working as expected. So let's actually just save this. So um, when show new, show modal when all guesses are complete. Cool. But also what I want to do is actually add some tests to give me some more confidence later that things are working as I want. So in our case, let's pull this up here. I'm gonna call up, we have app, we have app test. Let's add some tests right now. So we'll do yarn test. Um, we wanna have, so we have the title visible, that's cool. And we also what we wanna do is that we wanna make sure that it shows the empty state correctly of just there being no text on the screen. So it, uh, shows empty state. And the fun thing that we're now using Zustan, it makes it easy to mock the state for us. So we'll do use store. And then um, in use store, so if you go back to Zustan, there's a whole section that talks about how you can call, where is it? Do, 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 using Zustan without React. You can actually call where is it? Reading and writing state and reacting to changes outside of components. So use store actually has all these methods on it that you can actually call to actually change things to work how you want. So we can actually do use store set state and we're just gonna set the guesses to be empty to make sure that it's correct like that. Then we'll render the UI and then what we want to actually make sure is that we don't see the game over screen, right? So we're going to do uh, expect screen uh, query by text game over, right? That's what we have in here. We have the game over text game over. Make sure that this is null to be null. Uh, we also want to make sure that we have the right number of uh, squares on the page. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's copy and paste that. And we'll do, um, when you're actually just using HTML, you can actually just use the document API, which is really nice. So query selector all. And then the document structure is we have uh, main, and then inside of main, we have, what are these? These are divs. So we're gonna go here, we're gonna say, so main divs to have, um, to have length. So each row, wait a second, we have divs inside divs. Oh no, this should be confusing. Let's actually go here. Let's go into a uh, word row. This should actually be a span because it's in line. Save that. Doesn't change rendering. Cool. 
So in our case, we want to say, let's refresh the page. Great, cool, love it. Oh man, if I save this, that's passing. So actually, let's look this up for a second. So yarn dev. Refresh the page. This. We have each row. So I want to make sure that there's six rows. Like this, that's what we're testing for here. There's to have length uh, six. Like that. So let's actually go here. Uh, yawn test. The answer is yes, it's passing. So just to make sure, if I were to make this have five, it'd be mad. Cool. So it should be six. And then also what I want to test is that there's no content on here, like all these letters. So the way that I figured out how to do that is essentially doing a query selector on main. And when I say the text content uh, to equal zero, there should be no letters inside of there. So what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so this is working for an empty state. Let's now show one row of guesses. Uh, it shows one row of guesses. The guess will be hello, because that's my favorite guess to do. We'll render it, we'll save it, and we got errors everywhere, because this should equal hello. But I don't really need to assert the previous two, because those are correct already. Cool. Uh, it's deeply equal. Why is this still yelling at me? Oh, okay. Just took a while to run. All right. Now let's also test that we do the end game state. So it shows the game over state. And then just to make our lives easy, we're going to do hooray six fill hello. And then if we render this, a equals hello, 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 which is really funny, uh, but also makes sense. But also what we want to have here is that game over should be in the document. Uh, where are we? Right here. So that should fail. Now it should be to be, actually let's just count this out for a second. That should fail. Specs query by text. No, it should be, oh, we want to do get by text. Get by text, right? It's not passing because it does exist. We want this to say that it is to be in, but this is where the test doesn't like me. Just like that, we'll copy over this thing to ignore it as well again. Just like that, scroll down. Game over, get by text, add the exclamation mark. There you go, passing, cool. And we also want to do one last test where we can actually start a new game. It can start a new game. So we have this, we have this, and then we actually have to use this um, user event, which should be user event should be coming from here, like that. So this is a way to actually emulate user behavior. We will click and then um, we want to click on the uh, screen get by text of new game. We're going to click on that. And then it should have the main content equal to nothing again, like this. So game over exists, do this, because it's up. Cool, so all our tests are passing now. We have some tests, which is nice to have because now I can refactor with more confidence. So add some tests to app. Add some tests to that. Cool. Tests. Great. Gotta love it. Okay. Now this thing. 
annoyed the hell out of me. The fact that by default, all the squares are empty in this side until you type in and they all fill out correctly. Like it drove me insane. And it took me a long time of Googling. That was not worth you looking at me while I Googled to figure out how to fix this. Long story short, the magical incantation to fix this is this. So this is Tailwind, which is essentially letting you do a uh, before pseudo element. And the before pseudo element is gonna be inline block. And we're gonna also say the before pseudo element has content. And this is a new thing of Tailwind where you can actually just do arbitrary content in there because Tailwind's kind of funny now. It's not even just a, a suite of classes available to be used. It'll actually scan all your class names and then generate those class names for you after you've used them. So that's why it's able to actually intelligently just create ad hoc content for you. Um, and this is saying just have the content be a space. So now when I save this, yeah, it renders correctly because if you actually inspect into here, you can see that it has uh, this before and it's showing somewhere very far away right here before content. So content just like this, inline block, empty space. So if you were to do this and this, you'll see how it doesn't work anymore. But that's kind of the trick to make them all render correctly by default, just to have some dummy values in there that you can't see. Uh, that's annoyed to be enough to take the time to do it. Uh, make sure empty state renders, renders correctly. Uh, but I mean, it is the first thing you see when you build the application. So I think it does make sense to spend the time to actually uh, fix that. Okay, we have the basic bones of the application working as we need to. Uh, now we have to start adding in all the fine details that add up to a enjoyable game experience. The first thing that we kind of need to add in here is actually being able to show you the win state when you win the game without just getting to the end. Like right now, we don't show you any modal until you're done guessing. We want to do, we want it to be the case. So the answer is depth. If you were to do um, super, uh, right up here, super, and then growth. What was what was the answer? What was the answer again? Oh, depth. Uh, at this point, we want to show you that you won, uh, and. The problem with our current application structure is that we're not actually calculating your results globally. It's all encapsulated inside of a word row. Um, and we kind of need to lift this data up and make it accessible everywhere so we can actually change the state of the application and show you when you've actually won the game. So basically we need to kind of move this guest states we can move it into app state, but we have a store, so it makes sense to move it into the store. So um, we have here a row of guesses in the answer. We also have to store the results as well. Um, and there's two ways you kind of model this to my mind. You could have this guesses array as is, you could have guess results um, as well to be like a letter state um, array, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, that's not really where my mind went. Instead, what I had a plan of doing is um, essentially making uh, the guesses array be an array of objects for the actual guess row. So each guess row has the guess and the guess state, and I want to save each one of those as an item in the array itself. So we're going to make an interface called uh, guess row, and we're going to have it be an object. We'll have the guess be a string. And then the result is optional because when you're still doing a guess, we don't have the result left. So that's why it's optional. And this is going to be a letter state. And again, it's going to be an array here. So this is going to be our new interface, which is going to replace our guesses array. And I'm also going to rename this. Like I want this to actually be uh, rows down to be a little bit more agnostic on what it's actually being used for. And this is actually going to be an array of guess rows like this. So now each item in the array is going to be an object that has the guess and the result. So now, of course, we have to update our default state for the store. So we have, uh, we're going to call this rows. This is going to be an empty array by default. And then here we actually have to update this guesses. So now we have um, 
we're gonna make this into an object because we're adding this new object. So here we have, this is the existing guesses and we have guess and it should tell me that I'm missing, um, it's missing the following properties from type. This should just say we need the result. I, sometimes it's impossible to read what TypeScript is saying, but I want this to be um, result. This is gonna be a compute guess with a guess and the state answer. So we're gonna save that. Uh, why is this mad at me? We have state answer rows, add guess, new game. We have this guesses over here. The new game is gonna be rows. That's now happy. Uh, guess, guess is a string. It's mad at the state. Oh, here, this has to be uh, rows as well. Cool. Okay, uh, fun story. I actually had to record this segment twice because of the first time, uh, TypeScript got mad at me for reasons that I still don't understand. I actually um, cheated and actually, if you remove this, uh, it yells at me again. I don't know why. There's some weird TypeScript, uh, in, like there's some, some TypeScript typings in the, uh, what is this library called again? In the Zustan library is doing some weird inference that gets mad when the second argument of the create story API is not present. But everything else is checking fine. That was the only difference. It took me far too long to figure out while coding, but suffice it to say, everything is working as expected. Our store is now updated correctly. And what's nice about TypeScript, we can actually now see now where things are failing elsewhere. So we have in here the app, we can kind of just keep um, refactoring here. So this is now gonna be state rows. And then where else is it yelling? We have state rows length and then down here letters okay so now we have the rows is a guess row and this is now going to be um, the guess and the result and this is going to be the guess here and what we want to do is actually uh, move the result as a prop so let's do this here, result, result, like that. And then in word row, we need to add the result to be letter state. Ah, come back here, that was helpful. <laughs> that was helpful. Result, and then the result will be an empty array by default. And then we can actually get rid of this. And then the result, is going to be the result index like that. And we don't need this answer anymore either. So we'll need use store or compute guess. It's being done for us fully. Let's save that. Refresh the page. I'm sure we have some unhappiness. So let's see. If I were to, what is, what is the, uh, the word? The answer is still depth, which is cool. So I uh, will do hello. Ah, depth. Ah, look at that. So it's working as uh, expected. Uh, the state is being lifted, but we're still showing things correctly. So that's that's part one, where we have the state being lifted. Um, I guess this is a good part to just save our progress so far. Why is this still yelling at us? Oh, result is not assignable, is undefined. Oh, right, because this could be optional, of course, just like that. Be happy. Result. Result. Why are we still mad? Up here. Rows. Guess. Ah. This needs to be an object to make that work correctly. God, TypeScript is so nice because we have to make this like a guess row. Guess row guess. So everything is now working as expected. Sugar. Um, depth. And we have here the answer is lives now. Cool. Press the page, everything's working as expected. Okay, so let's uh, save this little bookmark right here. So we'll move um, <clears throat> uh, calculating result into store. Cool. Okay, so now let's actually get to where we're actually trying to get and being able to tell, to, being able to know when someone's actually won the game. So there's three states that a game can be in. And we're going to actually model that in our store, unsurprisingly. We have uh, game state, 
can be one of three states. It could be playing, when it's, the game's in progress, we have won or lost. Now, the so game state by default is going to be playing. And then when you make a new game, the game state is also going to be playing. Cool. Now, the best place to calculate when the game state may have changed is after you add a guess. So we have some work to do in here. So let's first have the, let's compute the result. So here we go, compute the result, uh, get, I can also use, I guess I can't use state, but we can use get here. So result is right here. And essentially what we wanna know is if we got the, so we have, um, we have result right here. And we want to know did win equals result. Uh, this is the few time that I use the uh, every method on the array, where I say if every value, so i, uh, i is equal to letter state match. So did every result result in a match, then you won. So we have rows here, and we're going to say game state, and we're going to say if you did win, then you won. However, we also want to know when you lost. So this is where I'm going to do something gross, but that's supposed to be the most pretty game. We're going to say, so what we actually have to do, we want to know when you've lost too. So to do that, let's actually calculate the next rows. And this we're going to pull up here like this. No, 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 like that, cool. Uh, this is going to be get like that. Cool. Don't need this for now. And what we're going to say is if the rows length is equal to how would I call this number of guesses? Where did I put this? Did I save it somewhere? Guess length. So we have to actually move this. So we move this over to here. We'll export this, we'll put it back here to the store, save that. And then we're gonna say if the guess, if the rows length is equal to the guess length, how many guesses you can have, then you lost, otherwise you're still playing. And set is unhappy. Uh, Rose, do this syntax error. No, go away. Ah, there we go. Okay, cool, cool. So we have here, we're gonna compute the guess after. So we're gonna compute the guess, get the result. We're gonna see if every result is a match. If it is, then you won, like here in lives. We're gonna get the new array of rows. So it could be five, six, whatever. And we're gonna say, if you did win, then you won. Easy peasy. However, if you didn't win, if the number of lengths is the guest length and you lost, otherwise you're still playing. And then we have to wire this up into the app. So we're going to say is game over if the game state is no longer playing. We'll save that. And let's refresh this. And it's not showing, probably because I didn't update this. Okay, so let's actually keep going. It didn't update because I added that logic before things refresh. So let's actually figure out what the word is again. It's delt. God, it's a hard word. We'll do delt. Cool. It's working. It calculated immediately that we won the game. So we're now actually showing the user that things are working. So the word is panel. We'll do panel, whatever. If you panel, we won. And then let's make sure we have a lost game is still working. So lost game, cool. So that's working as expected. However, are you feeling what I'm feeling? Um, seems like we need some tests to go along with this because this is some nice logic to make sure it works as expected. So let's go into app test and it's already yelling at me. I never updated the tests. Oh, what a horrible person I am. So let's do yarn test and things should fail.
because I never updated. This is no longer the right API. Uh, everything's just mad at me. So actually what I'm going to do uh, as kind of like a helper method for me is I'm gonna make um, my new game method a little bit more helpful to me. So if I go here, I want the new game to optionally take in initial rows. So for testing purposes, I can just initialize it with a value. And then what I'm gonna do is actually make this a little bit easier to read. I'm actually gonna take this add word. So this is returning an object and I want this to actually be a function now. So let's take this over here and let's make this into like this, return that. So everything should be still working. And what I'm gonna do is actually do function add guess and grab this like that. You will see what I'm doing in a second, go away. Like this, function add guess, which, okay, we're just not having the right syntax. Okay, cool, that's happy. And then add guess is here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for each <clears throat> initial row, we're going to add the guess. So we can actually have all the logic I have in here when you add a guess, make sure that the state works as expected. So we're gonna have new game take a initial guess optionally, and it will be a array of just guesses is what we're gonna do. <clears throat> just like that. So now we should be able to refactor this and call this ALS. Where is it gonna be? It's gonna be, we're gonna call uh, get state anymore. Okay, we're gonna call get state. Oops, get state. I'm gonna call new game. And then guesses, it's just gonna become empty array like that. So now, if I rerun this, we're passing. Okay, so we're back to where we were before, where things are passing as expected. <clears throat> but in our case, we want there to be, so where's the modal? We have game over. This should be shows the uh, lost game over state. We also want to show the one game over state. So we'll go here, shows one game over state. I'm gonna have this be only two of them. Uh, and we're also going to get the answer. So we're gonna save this. Just should be failing, because it's not there yet. What we're actually gonna say is we're going to do, 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 do. <clears throat> get the answer. So you store, get state, uh, the answer. And then what we can actually say is, uh, let's go over here. We're gonna say, oops, add guess of answer. So I've gotten the answer, we're gonna add a third guess. And then if I save this, it's passing because it's actually showing the thing expected, uh, which is great. That's what we wanted to do. So cool, so now we'll be able to test that when we get to a mid a one game state, we'll show that as well. Uh, cool, so let's add this in, save this, so uh, be able to show the one game state. Awesome, doing super. Okay, so we're doing good, and we're still getting to like the uh, uh, fit and polish section of our app building journey. This one's gonna be hard to teach. <laughs> I'm just gonna warn myself and for you. Um, the actual world game doesn't have an input area which we don't wanna do. Um, it lets you actually, this is my version, but uh, you can't see what I'm typing right now on my keyboard, not on any input. So that's what I actually wanna add support here for as well, is being able to actually just type in the page and have it show up um, as our guest. So first things first, we're gonna get rid of our inputs. Like we don't need this anymore, it's going away. This was just there to help us while we were developing. It was an easy thing to do. Oh boy, so afraid. So now we have this on change, which is just gonna go away, but we'll secure it for now. And, you know, there's a lot of logic that we have to put in here. And really what it comes down to is we want to be able to get the guess, the new guess value. And the way that we're gonna do this is we actually want to kind of get the guess value from globally. 
So what I'm gonna do is make a new custom hook called use guess. And it's gonna return the same API as guess and set guess. So down here, we're gonna make use guess. And first things first, we're gonna take in no argument. Let's just do this all the way up. Okay. So of course we need to have, okay, fine. Let's do that. We can start off there. We have the guess set guess. Um, and <clears throat> we need to actually be able to bind from the keyboard inputs to in here. So we're actually gonna have to do uh, use effect to be able to go from there. Uh, and we're gonna actually, uh, let's do this. We're gonna say document add event listener for key down on key down. And of course, we're going to clean up. We're gonna say when the application unmounts, we're gonna say document remove event listener. Just like that on key down. And this is only gonna to have to run once. We don't need to, nothing's changing. Uh, just this function is what we have to now define, which is going to be a lot of fun to work with you. So we have const on key down equals, there you go, cool. Okay, that's one thing I love about GitHub Copilot. I'll have to remember what the actual um, signature is for that. Let's save that. This is yelling at me, uh, key down E. Oh, it's not React, right? This is actually a native version. So we're just going to have this be a keyboard event, generic like that. Cool. Okay. So the element that we're being given into here has a lot of properties on it, but for our cases, we want to actually have there be a letter equals the key. So let's actually just start by logging this so we actually understand what's going on here. So let's open this up. Look at the console. Uh, let's actually start up the UI because we're still doing testing mode. Cool. So now if I do hello, that's all working cool. They're all one link long, but I can also just type in random characters, uh, which I don't really want. The only, the only special characters that I care about is enter and backspace. So I need to also have this proxy to this value. And also I think, so there's a few things to note. One, I'm kind of breaking outside of React here, like I'm using native event handlers, but I want to proxy them to React land so things still work as I expect. But also a big change from the input element to this one is that I'm not getting the entire word anymore. I'm getting just the next letter. So I actually have to append the new letter to guess. So like the easy thing you could imagine doing is having there be um, set guess to the next letter right? And then what will be the, uh, it'll be guess plus letter to append them. So let's save that. And if I start typing H E L L O, you'll see that it's not actually appending. And that's because of this really horrible edge case that killed me for a while where I am binding this function once and that's it. And react is running this hook with this definition here. Um, this function is not re being redefined as guess is being redefined. It's a term called a, a stale reference. So guess is actually never being updated in here. It's always an empty string, no matter what. So if I actually were to um, log guess after this, you'll see that it's always empty string. And the way that I can actually fix that is the second argument of use state, you can also have it be a uh, function. So we can have it be the current guess. And then I can actually do, uh, I can return the next value. So it'll be the current guess plus letter. So let's refresh, we'll do this. And things are still not working, which is awesome. Uh, let's refresh the page again, current guess. Uh, oh, sorry, this is, yeah, so the current guess is an empty string, so we have H, E, L, oh wait, well this is always going to be an empty string anyway, so let's actually log it inside of here to actually get that 
new reference. So we have H E L L O. Uh, nope, current guess. Again, can't type. This keeps erroring out to so keep doing um, meta, and that just makes things unhappy. But I have H E L L O. So things are being captured, which is awesome. So what I want there to do is that on the fifth letter, uh, I want it to not let you do anymore. So that's the first edge case to say. So we're gonna say, um, so this is the new guess. We'll call this new guess. Const new guess equals the current letter plus guess. Okay, I don't need this logging anymore. And we're gonna say if the um, if the well actually the first thing we want to do is we're gonna say if the current guess length uh, is equal to the what is this letter length? This is six? It's five. Okay, it's in here. Cool. So if it's equal to five, then just return the current guess. We don't really want to do anything about that there. Here we're gonna do new guess. So let's see what happens here. So I refresh the page. Do H E L O. Things are working as expected. I'm typing in letters, you can't fail, but things are still working great. So let's add in backspace support. And this is where things look a little bit weird. Um, we want this to be before, so you can actually delete things and change the behavior. We're going to switch off of the, uh, the letter, really. And we're going to say in the case that it's a backspace, we want to actually return the new guess minus one guess. So that's cool. So let's save that, see how it goes. Refresh the page, H-E-L-O, backspace is not happy with this. Oh, because it doesn't need to be, it's already adding it in here, which we don't really, which we don't really want. So this is where things get a little bit confusing, where we only really wanna add the letter if it's not, if it's actually a letter. So we're gonna say if, if the letter length is actually one, uh, then we'll add that letter. Otherwise, we'll just keep the current guess to not actually append the whole word backspace to it. So let's go here, let's save it. We'll do H-E-L-O, and deleting is working as expected. Cool, cool, so that's working. And then what we want to do is say if it's the enter key, case enter, we want to actually do one of two things. If the word is done, then we want to go back to zero because you've essentially cleared it out. So we're going to say if the um, new guess length is equal to the letter length, then we shall just return an empty string to re re return it back to zero. That's all we want to do there. That's fine. Um, that is cool. And then the other thing we want to do is when that returns to zero, uh, well, actually, also what we want to do here is add that guess, right? So let's go into here. We're going to get um, add guess equals use store. Uh, we're going to do s. S is add guess. And here we're going to say add guess new guess. Oops. Add guess new guess. Cool. Okay, let's try this out. So do hello, enter. What? What? What just happened? I did one enter once. I did enter once and it's doing it twice. Now this is why you don't do these things all live because it took me literally all day. Let's go to the store, clear this out because things are in a wonky state. It took me literally like half a day to actually figure out what was going on. Uh, long story short, uh, this set guess is given a function that React assumes is item potent. That's not actually changing the state of the world because it's actually hitting this function multiple times as it's reconciling the state. So this add guess is actually being hit many times 
And there's no way to fix that within this usage of the set state function. No way to do that. So instead, uh, the workaround that I came up with, which is uh, pretty dang gross, is to essentially see when a word has gone from five letters to zero, and then add that in through a separate um, effect. So I have here, uh, I'm copying and pasting in the use previous hook, which you can actually find on the Redux docs. And what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna actually have guess right here. I'm gonna do previous guess equals use previous for guess. And what we're gonna say down here is that use effect, oops, come on, use effect when, ah, stop it. Okay, I can't read what it's doing. This, like that, we only want it to run when the guess changes. And what we're gonna, oh my gosh, uh, guess. We're gonna say if the guess length is now zero, when it was being zeroed out, and the previous guess length is equal to the letter length, then we will add the guess here. So this is our crazy, crazy workaround. Oh, we don't really need this function anymore up here. Goodbye. This doesn't take a default argument. Goodbye. Uh, let's refresh the page. Let's see if we can clear the state. Some things are still unhappy with us. Let's see what it is. We have here guess. Oh, I think there's just some arguments. Uh, can that read properties app of length? So no, line number 92. Ah, right, because this could actually be uh, undefined by default. Save that, cool. So now if you do hello, I hit enter, it submits as we expected. Um, which is pretty dang cool. And then there's something weird going on here. Like this set guess is it's mad that it's not callable. Uh, used, used guess thinks it's returning a string or an action. Uh, essentially, it's getting confused by this. This, is, this should be returning this with an overload, but this should actually just be like this. And that should make things stop yelling. Yes, no more. No more to touch error yelling quite at us. Okay, um, this looks like it's working as expected. I can just delete it. This is cool. Let's see what the actual answer is here. It is judge, enter, game over. Look at that. Things are working. That was far less scary than I thought it'd be, which is a lot of fun. Save that. Okay, cool. Uh, you know, I really should add tests to this, but I'm not going to because it just scares me at this point. So we're just going to say add global key down listener. Uh, as a stretch goal for yourself, if you want to add tests, be my guest. Okay, next thing you want to do is actually um, test that you're, that we're only allowing uh, valid guesses. So first things first, let's add a little utility function that lets us do that. Word utils, make a function called uh, is valid word, word is a string and it's going to turn a boolean and it's just going to turn word bank includes word. Pretty dang simple. The only thing that's better than making a simple function is to make a simple test because then we get to feel real good about ourselves. So we're out here uh, is valid word and so it works it works with a valid word and it works with an invalid word. So we're gonna expect that is valid word. Oh, I wanted that suggestion. Is valid word. Uh, we'll do boost to be true. Uh, let's go back to yarn test. I'm going to say what's with n. Invalid word. 
Uh, so let's do this, save, save. Uh, boost is true, should be false. This should be um, walls. Cool, so it's working according to our dictionary. Nice and easy. So let's start using it. We are going to have this just be when the word is submitted. We don't actually need to really store the state because the actual guess itself is ephemeral. Um, this is a nice little UI exercise for ourselves. We're gonna say, um, we need some state here. So we have to say show invalid guess, set invalid guess. We'll say use state. We're gonna make it false by default. And we're gonna say um, use effects. So we're gonna say, we're gonna check this when, well actually first we actually have to add some logic to our store. We don't actually uh, want, well, we actually don't want this to be submitted until um, we know that it's valid. So we're actually gonna push this. I guess you could push this to the store, but we're gonna push this here because it's ephemeral. So actually, before we actually add it to the store, we're actually gonna move this out. I'm gonna make this. Um, how, how can we do this? Let us think. We want to actually move this up so we can actually conditionally add things there. So I move this over here, which means that we actually have to move some other functions up here. So add guess and use previous right here like that. Okay. So this should still work as expected. Cool. And what we're going to say is, um, if the game, if the guest length is zero, and, it's, and here, if we're about to add the guess, we're actually gonna now make this conditional. We're gonna say, if it is, if it is a valid word, so this is the guess, uh, wait a second, what do we want? We want previous guess, right, yes. If the, if the previous guess is a valid word, then we wanna add the guess, and we'll do uh, set invalid guess to false. However, if it is not a valid guess, if it is a lie, then we're gonna say set invalid guess to true. And we're also gonna say, we're actually gonna set guess to the previous guess to actually have it be unchanged. We're actually not gonna add it in here. So if I do this, you see it kind of flashing here, uh, which is cool. It's not a valid word. Boost, valid word, gets submitted. This is gibberish, don't let it through. Um, we also want to show some indication that this is the case. So when invalid guess is true, what we're going to actually do is tell the row to change itself. So I actually have this be um, class name. And I want to say if uh, show invalid guess is true, uh, then we want to do animate bounce, oops, animate bounce. Otherwise just do an empty string. And of course we have to add this, uh, this doesn't actually have a prop yet. So we'll do class name, string, threading the needle, uh, there's an empty array. We'll have this be, what happened? Oops, we want this to be the class name like that, be a string by default, and this will have to be uh, adding it in here. So beat like that, class name, cool. Whoa, why is the whole thing bouncing? Uh, what? Should just be the row. Why is this whole thing bouncing? Oh, <laughs> because show invalid guess is now being applied to every row because we're not just applying that. So where is this? We have here, yeah, animate bounce is being added to each row. 
We only want it added to the one row. Okay, that's, that's, that's nauseating. So we actually have to know which row we're on. So we have in here, this should give us the current row. So we're gonna say um, current row is zero. Uh, the push method returns the index, uh, it returns the new length of the array. So in our case, we're gonna have it be the uh, current row. So it's gonna, it returns the new length of the array, but because arrays are zero index, we actually iterate over them, which is gonna be minus one. So we're gonna say if show a valid guess and current row equals index, then we apply this gibberish. Cool, so that's bouncing. It's bouncing forever, which we don't wanna do. It's never going away. So let's add a fun little uh, timeout to make it not just bounce forever. So make another use effect. And we're gonna say, uh, this is, I feel like it's always adding extra. So we're gonna have this actually be show invalid guess. We're actually gonna have this say, um, if show invalid guess is true, then we're gonna make a little timeout. So we'll have this be let ID, and we'll just have this be ID equals set timeout, and then set invalid guess false after 2000 seconds, sure. Then also to make things correct, we're gonna say that if you actually unmount things, we'll clear that timeout as well. This is mad because it has a type of any, which I don't really care to type right now, so I'm just gonna actually, well, it's actually a Node.js timeout, which I don't have memorized, I just have notes that lets me actually help things out. Let's just kind of just do timeout. No, I'm just gonna have this be uh, any for now. Cool. So now if I do this, hit it, two seconds, and then it stops bouncing. So now I actually know when things are not working as expected. Cool. All right, that sounds good. So only allow valid guesses and save that. Okay, we are in the home stretch. Most of the functionality is working. Like this is actually an entire game. It's working as expected. Um, actually, I think that I actually wanna do in our modal, is actually show the answer. So we can actually take word row and we're actually just gonna put this here. Uh, no key, the letters is gonna be the answer which is gonna be um, uh, state answer, and then uh, no result, no class name, save that. So now if you get to the end, oh, come on, boost, 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 boost. Okay, so the answer was dozen. I'm not gonna ignore this styling for now, you can fix that later, but now we actually show the answer, so let's actually save that too. So show answer, and modal, cool. Okay, so the game is pretty much working. Like we have a fully functioning game, but one thing we're missing is the keyboard, which is a big part of the game, quite frankly, because it shows you which letters aren't valid, which are, um, I don't know why, oh, E, you actually don't have that there. Um, it actually helps you kind of guess the game. Like this is actually a big part of it. So we actually have to make a, a keyboard. So we're gonna make keyboard.tsx and we're gonna do export default function keyboard. And for now, let's just return a div that is keyboard, just doing some nice little wiring and we'll add the keyboard over here. Just so we can start. Actually, what I'm gonna do because I developed this way, it's so actually gonna add the keyboard up here just so it's easy to see like that. Keyboard, keyboard. All right, are you ready for some UI fun? Uh, we have the content, which is the keyboard. So we're just gonna make this into a array of arrays. We're gonna do const keyboard keys, keyboard keys, like that. So we have all letters, we have enter and backspace, we have some buffer here, empty array here, and empty array here to render the uh, space we need for layout purposes. So we have the keyboard keys and what we wanna do is just render them. So we're actually going to take the keyboard keys and map over them. We have um, essentially the keyboard row 
right here, go away. And we're gonna have each one of them be a button. So we're gonna have this be return button and each one will be um, the key. Oh, whoops, we need to actually iterate over each one of the keyboard rows as well. So each, each row will be a div, right? So this is the overarching div. The keyboard row will be uh, return uh, div like that. And we're gonna have this be keyboard row key. Yeah, sure. But I actually don't want this to be a key. I want this to actually be a button. Button. And yeah, key like that. So let's save that. We have something mad at us here. Return div. Oh man, I hate when this syntax error happens. Okay, div, div, keyboard rows, map. This is here. This has to be uh, like that. Okay, cool. That's it. So, okay, cool. So we have all these things working as expected. They're divs. Let's add some styling. Uh, because they're just rows, we're actually going to use flex. So we'll do flex column. Cool. It didn't do anything. Awesome. Um, and then each div here needs to have a key. So let's actually get the uh, uh, row index like that. Key will be the row index. Yeah. Key will be the row index. And then class name for each row, we're gonna have it be, um, it'll be flex as well. Save that, justify center, like that. Uh, we'll have spacing on the top and bottom. And then also we're gonna have there be, um, for every chat, we'll come back to this actually in a second. That's cool. Um, let's style the button. So we'll have, um, I'm actually just gonna do this here because I'm thinking ahead a little bit. The styles are gonna be uh, rounded. So we're gonna have rounded keys, uh, which will have a background of a gray of 400. And we're gonna have it be font bold, bold font, uppercase, um, uh, and then some padding inside. So let's actually add this here. Class name equals styles. Save that. Here we go. Okay, cool. Um, we're also gonna do, is this gonna be what I want? Flex one to have it grow. Aha, things are growing nicely. Uh, Taylor has this lovely little utility where you can actually um, add spacing to all the children elements. So. This is on the x-axis in between. So we're saying for every child element inside a row a button, add some spacing. It's looking like a keyboard, huh? Looking like a keyboard, huh? And then we have some really advanced conditional to do. We have, um, also this needs to have a key. So this could be a key, which is a key. Uh, we'll say a key like that. Actually, this could just be an index, let's do within each row so it's gonna be the same <clears throat> like that cool and then we want to do some more conditional styling so if the key is empty here or if it's longer than one character we want things to be different so backspace and enter is fine but um, background gray we don't want that so we're only gonna say uh, if the key is equal to this, sorry, if it's not equal to that, then we'll add that in. So we'll do styles plus equal that. We'll add some spacing. So it's not equal to this. Cool. Okay. So this is working as expected. Things are working. Backspace enter. That is swapped. Nope. Enter backspace. That's fine. <clears throat> so this is the basic keyboard working. Um, let's commit this so far. Sure. So we'll say basic keyboard styling working. Cool. And then we have to add some behaviors where you can actually click a button and how to actually add it in here, just like that. So 
for that, we're gonna do from an API perspective. So we're gonna say on click, we're gonna give you the letter. And then we wanna actually add this letter <clears throat> to everything. So we'll do uh, to do right that. So keyboard needs a uh, argument. We're gonna have it be on click and it's gonna be uh, on, cl ah. on click letter. It's gonna be given a letter and return a void. So on button, we're gonna have this be an on click as well. So we're gonna say um, on click equals on click. Uh, we don't actually wanna pass this in directly. So we're actually gonna rename this to be uh, on click prop. Const on click, and this is gonna be um, E, uh, we're gonna say on button click. No, uh, on on button click. I have this be const on click equals e. Uh, we're gonna do it be react dot mouse event on an HTML button element like that. Cool, and then. Why is this yelling at me? I need the closing tag. Sweet. <clears throat> so let's get the content of the button. So we have here the letter. So this should work by and large. This text content, um, it could be null, I guess. But we're gonna say, uh, do we care about this? I think we're just gonna say, um, I'm just gonna do this for now. So like that, let's actually comment this log so we can see what's going on, letter, like that. So now if I go here into the logs, I can see all these things working. Okay, that's an empty, we don't want that. Enter and backspace, we wanna pass up as well because it has behavior. But we're gonna say empty string um, which we don't really care about. So what we could do is split two things. We could say if it's empty to not do anything or just disable the ability to do that. So what we'll do here is we'll say if the key, if the key is equal to an empty string, like an actual empty string, we're actually gonna do styles plus equals, uh, no pointer, pointer events none. So that actually should disable the ability to click on it. Yep, look at that, okay. So it's like it's not even there. Enter and backspace are still working as expected. Cool, okay, so it's passing it up nice and neatly, which is sweet. And then we actually have to handle this. We actually have to add this to our array of our guests. And if you remember, we have our little guest handler here that lets us actually, that actually holds the guest state. And I don't really want to break that apart into two places. So instead, what I'm going to do is actually, this is essentially adding one letter. So what I'm actually going to do here is kind of abstract that a little bit. So we're actually going to make this into a function called uh, add guest letter. And it's going to take a just just a letter, just one letter. And in our case, we're gonna do set guess just like that. Add guess letter, letter here, here. Cool. That's the syntax error. Save that. So boost still working. Cool. And we can also return this from here, because why can't you return three? Why not? Let's re update our signature to return um, letter string void. And now we go up here, set guess, add guess letter. And now we can actually go right down here like that. 
Look at that. Look at that, that proper software architecture adding things as expected. Enter. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, So that's working. Let's save that for now. Uh, uh, add functionality to keyboard. And now there's one last little step here to do is to actually show the letter state inside the keyboard. This is a whole big mess of things. Now we actually want to save this state in the store because that's what holds our source of truth. And we're actually going to create a keyboard letter state. So let's go to the store state, make a thing called keyboard letter state. And it's going to be this, where each key in here is gonna be a letter. So each, it's gonna be an object where the keys are letters and the values are gonna be letter states. So just to visualize this, it's going to be like B, it's going to be present, uh, O, it's going to be uh, miss. So for example, um, by default, this is just going to be, um, where are we here? Keyboard letter states, just be an empty object. Uh, when you do a new game, you got to make that an empty object as well. And then we're going to update this when you add a guess. So what we're going to say here is we're going to get the existing letter state. So keyword letter state equals get keyword letter state like that. And then we're going to actually iterate over our results. So for each result in here, we're going to have the R and the index and we are going to get the letter for this result so this is the result guess letter which is going to be the guess index so if the result is this we want to get the b in this case and then what we're going to say is we're going to we might have to update the current letter state so let's say current letter state is equal to the keyboard letter states uh, for the result guess letter. I'm a big fan of long variables. Um, switch on the current letter state. Uh, if the letter state is already a match, so letter state match, we actually don't want to do anything. It's already good. We'll keep that as is. Um, if the letter state is present, we might need to uh, upgrade it. Like we're going to go backwards, but we might go upwards. So we're going to say if, uh, where is this? If the current result, let's go away. If the current result is, oh my God, stop, letter stop, uh, miss, then we just want to break. We don't want to do anything. Um, however, if it's none of those cases, we're then going to then just apply the result here, just like that. Then we will update. So we're updating the keyword letter state here uh, to get a new copy. And then we'll update this here. Okay. So we need to actually boost. Yeah, I know. Boost, boost. Boost, 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 birth. Cool. So boost should have letter state inside here. So I actually go into here and actually pull in the letter state because we're going to need to use that. We're going to have this be const uh, keyboard letter state equals use store uh, s, s keyboard letter state log keyboard letter state like that this should show us here we go b-o-o-s-t are all zeros 
we'll do sugar. Now we have A, which actually has its present. So that's working as expected, which means that we have to now color our keyboard as expected, which is another fun amount of tweaking the styles. Uh, we obviously want to get our styles in here. So we'll have the key state styles and we're gonna have it be uh, letter state miss. Uh, we're actually, we're, we did this before in the word row. Word row, let's copy and paste this over here. Values here. Cool. I gotta import these in. And if it's a miss, we want the background to be gray of the key. Uh, let's actually just, we don't need the borders at all. Uh, if it's a present, what do we want? We want it to be yellow. So yellow is correct. And green if it's the match. So what we're gonna say in here, we have to get the actual keyboard letter states for the key. So I uh, will do uh, letter state equals keyboard letter state. And so this is a fun little, okay, so hold on a second. Let's move this up here. So we have the key, which we have to get from the keyboard letter state. So we have the keyboard letter state, which is gonna take in the key. So for example, it's gonna be zero or one or two for the yellows. And we have to take this value, the actual state of the keyboard, then do key state styles. So a nice little multi-index here. And then what we're gonna say is that if there is a letter state, we are then going to append it. Yes. Okay, no. So A should be showing something differently. Uh, let's check the A letter, see if there's anything going on there. So we have background yellow, so that's actually on there. Um, I think the problem is that we are applying this gray by default. There we go. So this is overriding it, which is always so much fun. So what we want to actually do um, is if there's a letter state, we're going to apply this. And then we're going to say else if there's no key. There we go. Things are updating us correctly. So now if we go here, um, there's another word, stare. That's a word, uh, wires, layers, whatever, boost. Um, what's the word? What is the word? Mar dictionary is not the best. This dance, dance. Look at that, all those letters turn green. Cool, I mean, it's working. By and large, minus a few edge cases, I'm sure, but I'll take it. Let's go to app to actually move this down to the appropriate location. Over here. Save that. And here, let's add some styling to add some. We'll do margin bottom four, add some spacing. Yeah, yellow. Yellow. But yeah, we got the, uh, got the keyboard showing the right state. Uh, um, have keyboard show right state. That's, um, that's the, uh, kind of the full feature set there. I think if you think about it, that's, uh, that's kind of what we were trying to build there with the application. Um, we're there, we did it. That's we, we made reactal. That is it. Um, you can check out uh on the repo like i actually have like my, my finished uh slightly more polished version that you can actually check out if you want to see this code as well if you want to play with it for yourself right here but like this whole tutorial this whole walkthrough was essentially that same thing we just did the keyboard and that's what we did right a few differences here and there obviously but um by and large is what we made. Uh, and this is the live version as well. Um, 
but you made it through this entire tutorial of making Reactal with my whole stream of consciousness. Uh, when I was actually making it live, I stole um, Wordle's actual game list, which was really fun to do. You can kind of go into here and go to the script and you scroll down and you see a lot of words. So I'll leave that as an exercise for you to do yourself. But congratulations, I'm very proud of you that you made it through all this way. So thank you so much. I do hope you enjoyed learning how to make your own Wordle clone. Uh, any questions, leave them down below. Uh, if you made it to the end of this video, the magic word is boost, obviously. So just add that in as a comment, boost, because we definitely boosted our way through this entire thing. Very excited. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned some new things, start some techniques, some thinking and all that fun stuff. Um, feels weird to end. I think this is gonna be like a two or three hour long video. Feels weird to end it, except to say thank you for watching it. And uh, I have no idea when I'll ever do this again, but it was fun for me just to make a new video like this. That's just uh, large. Um, keyword for mobile use. Yeah, you know, it was fun. Fun little game. Tailwind, uh, Zoo Stand, uh, all the things, all the things. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you again in my next video. Till then, stay happy, stay good.